i strongly believe that um you know the youth uh a lot of them will understand the true meaning of spirituality a little bit into the spiritual journey yes but a lot of them initially you need to show them that fruit that Correct. you know this is what you will get from Indeed. it so why should a 20 year old mm-hmm. in today's day age or a teenager mm-hmm. why should they take up something like meditation or mm-hmm. even just read or get to know more about the spiritual path sure. what's in it for them uh, your material in your professional life for example if a 20 year old still mm-hmm. at university mm-hmm. wants to excel in his or her course mm-hmm. uh, imagine you practice meditation and what we were talking earlier on mindfulness where you learn to be in the present mm-hmm. You can imagine when your systems get conditioned and habituated and trained to be in the present that's exactly what's called concentrate what concentration means right focus focus concentration and most students will complain that I'm not able to focus I'm not able to concentrate so the immediate result of meditation and mindful practices is your focus and your concentration whatever you do improves mm. whether it's your study whether it's your work whatever you do it improves mm. The the monk definition that was taught to me is that spiritual means where the spirit is behind the ritual. So where the where the ritual is done with understanding, intention and depth. That it is done with a deeper sense of understanding, with the spirit of love, of compassion, of devotion. That is what spirituality is. So spirituality is infusing these very powerful activities of devotion but actually doing them with devotion that is spirituality the world of spirituality is like really broad mm-hmm. but the basic definition of it is like focus on your karma game be a good person work really hard like with whatever work you're doing stay honest correct and the process of meditation and self discovery like how you went to new zealand to like discover yourself yeah um that can happen when a person does like a lot of deep meditations daily also because that's effectively what you're doing what is meditation you're pulling your focus away from the real world just into your breath hmm. or just into that one thing you're thinking yeah the goal is to forget your identity make yourself shunya basically to me god is at, at the very essence of it god is the recognition that there is a source and a power and an energy that is divine and there's something beyond us something beyond us something inside of us and something that connects everything in the universe so i think every faith like every aspect of life will have means to communicate mm. how they feel to whether they call god whether they call it universe whether they call it energy whether they call it power or whether they call it nothing you know what i mean but there's a means to communicate your genuine feelings and that's when then this different rituals kind of come into existence mm. i truly believe that uh god is a supreme personality um and and is someone that you can have a relationship with i think we all want to be more spiritual and conscious uh but we want to do it from a deep place not just a following rules space so whether it's a mark on the forehead or beads in your neck or a certain kind of attire or a certain kind of practice that you adopt so all meant to be able to express this but once the spirit is gone though what we have is a mere set of rituals which is what more or less religion kind of today is seen as mm. and which is why a lot of youth doesn't even want to look at that side mm. because they see it simply as a set of mere rituals mm. without the spirit they being there mm. but i think if we can actually get deeper into what the spirit behind it is mm. a lot of it will actually start making a lot of sense mm. and so we went to this event to hear this monk speak and the monk was from india his name was goranga das he uh went to iit but had given up his degree to become a monk And so I thought you either have to be really crazy or really smart because why would you do that? Why would you give up your degree at IIT to become a monk? And so I got really interested by his sacrifice and and his choice. And at the time he was starting a new project and this new project was to provide villages with a proper functioning village, a sustainable community and a livelihood to actually give back to the communities. to teach people there about business agriculture to really help them make the most of their lives and it was being constructed by monks and so i got completely uh, blown away by the fact that these monks were not only going deep and doing meditation but they were also serving and helping the world so i've always uh, been the kind of person that i feel 
that you know apart from my singing and apart from my musical career i've come here to do good mm. because i don't know what what it is but i definitely do strongly feel that there is the side of me that wants to really help people mm. and guide people mm. at the age of 25 i have learned a lot i know a lot which i feel i can share with younger musicians who are now beginning beginning and probably disillusioned about what they want to do or how they want to go about it or bring a certain structure to them and say that this is this if you do this <laughs> this will happen and and i've done it and i know it will happen so i feel like i have that side to me you can do both you can take care of your mind and take care of your own inner life but that you can also try and make a difference in the world because i saw this perfect balance of self care and self mastery balanced with service and philanthropy and giving back to the world in every aspect of life we need mentors guides teachers gurus like if i were to learn singing i would need someone from the hindustani gharan side of music or from the carnatic side of music to teach me what music is mm. you would have exceptional people who's like you know on the station railway station somewhere singing gifted these are people who are probably gifted and never trained but they're exceptions mm. the general rule is we need to be coached and mentored into learning something right mm. uh, i don't think spirituality is an exception as well mm. you know where we need uh, gurus or guides or mentors who will uh, teach us and lead us onto that path now the issue is when the spiritual leaders or coaches or gurus or mentors become the focal point or the center point mm. and the spiritual wisdom that they are teaching goes at the back seat mm. then it becomes cultist mm. what's a cult a cult is where the figure becomes the center and the message and the practice and the wisdom goes at the back okay mm. now contrast that with the wisdom coming to the front mm. and the person saying okay i'm here to lead you i'm here to train you i'm here to guide you but this is what you should be connecting to mm. okay that's your real guru that's your real guru